All right, this section, they're finally teaching you stuff we've been doing all year, the Pythagorean theorem. So, this is nothing new. It's pretty much just going to be a review for you. There's just one new thing in it. But Pythagorean theorem, it only works on right triangles. This whole chapter is right triangles, so it's all the stuff we're doing is with right triangles. <coughs> in any right triangle, it always has a 90. The two pieces that form the 90s are called the legs. And then the side opposite the 90 is called the hypotenuse. Is everyone able to identify the hypotenuse in any right triangle? Okay, yeah. you'll need to, to do, especially the stuff we're doing in the rest of the chapter. <coughs> so, in any right triangle, if you take the leg and square it and add on the other leg squared, it will always equal the hypotenuse squared. So instead of saying leg, leg, and hypotenuse, they call this A and B. It doesn't matter which is which, but the hypotenuse has to always be C. So that's how they come up with A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to have two legs given and you're looking for the hypotenuse, or a leg and an hypotenuse, and you're looking for a leg. So you can always just plug them in to this if you don't remember the shortcuts. A squared plus B squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So when you figure this out, 10 squared is 100, 4 squared is 16, so it would be 116 equals X squared. So in order to figure it out, you'd have to square root it. Most of the time, we round to the nearest tenth. So that would round to 10.77, 10.8. Now, this assignment we're doing next, they tell you to leave it as a radical. So that's like that worksheet we did at the beginning of this chapter. That means you can't write it as a decimal. So remember to simplify these. You've got to find if any perfect squares go into it. Square to 1 doesn't help you at all, but it's a perfect square. 4, 9, 16, 25. So here's the first 10 perfect squares. So in 116, it's best to start right about halfway. 64 is more than half, so I know that doesn't go into it. 49, I know it doesn't. You can check 36. 116 divided by 36 doesn't go into it evenly. I know 25 won't. 16, do you think it will? No. I doubt it. Nope. 9, do you know the shortcut to see if 9 goes into a number? No. Add all the numbers up. 1 plus 1 plus 6 is 8, and 9 doesn't go into 6, or 8, I mean. So I know 9 doesn't go into it. 4 goes in there 29 times. So this would break up into 4 times 29, which would simplify to 2 square roots of 29. This one would be the leg squared plus the leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So when you solve this, 10 squared is 100. 12 squared is 144. So we'd have to subtract 100. And you'd get x squared equals 44. So then when you square root it, if we're rounding to the nearest tenth, it's 6.6. .6. But again, tomorrow's assignment, you've got to leave it in radical form. This one's pretty easy. What perfect square goes into this? Huh? <laughs> 4 times 11. So that would be 2 square roots of 11.
what you got to do is you got to find if one of these, if none of these go into it, it's, it's considered simplified. But you got to find if a perfect square goes into it, which 4 did. 4 times 11 is 44. And then the square root of 4 just is a 2. So, one of these two things happens. It's either the two legs you know or a leg and an hypotenuse. If it's the two legs, the shortcut is 10 squared plus 4 squared square rooted, right? We've been doing that all year on those. Hopefully you remember it. If it's this, what do you got to do to them? Subtract. It would be 12 squared minus 10 squared, and then you square root it. It's always this or that. So, the one thing that's new, and you did learn this in eighth grade, but you probably forgot it by now. A Pythagorean triple. Something that's super easy as long as you remember what it is. All this means, if it's a Pythagorean triple, um, no sides have been rounded. So basically, if you end up with a non-perfect square, I rounded this to 10.8 and I rounded this to 6.6. .6. So these two are regular numbers, but that's been rounded, so this is not a Pythagorean triple. This one's not a Pythagorean triple. The most common Pythagorean triples is a 3, 4, 5. Whole number, whole number, whole number. So a 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple. If you double this, this is the second most common right triangle, a 6, 8, 10. And then you can just keep doing that. You could triple this, you'd get 9, 12, 15. You could take it times 4, you'd get 12, 16, 20. Take it times 5, times 6. So these are common ones. Another really common one is a 5, 12, 13. So you could double this to get a 10, 24, 26. Okay. Um, and the reason why these are triples is because 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. 6 squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. Another one that's kind of common you'll see a lot is a 7, 24, 25. Okay. Now, a mistake people make is they sometimes say if there, if there is a decimal in it, it's not a triple. If it's a decimal that ends, like, uh, I'm just going to make these numbers up, but if you had a right triangle like this, 6.2, 4.4, and 8.1. If these haven't been rounded, this is a Pythagorean triple. Everyone got that? So it can have decimals, it's just, if it's a terminating decimal, all of them, it's still a Pythagorean triple. It's just when you get square roots in them, if you get a square root in your answer that's not a perfect square, that decimal's gonna go on forever without repeating, so that means it's not a Pythagorean triple. So, the assignment, you're gonna have to find the missing side, and then just say yes or no if it's a triple or not. So on this one, since it's the hypotenuse, you would go 15 squared plus 8 squared and square root it. So that is 289. This one just happens to be a perfect square. If I square root that, I get 17. So you would say x equals 17. Is this a Pythagorean triple? Yes. This one, since it's a leg you're looking for, you'd have to subtract them. It would be 20 squared minus 15 squared, and then square root it. And you get 175, which is not a perfect square. If I square root that, you get 13.22875656. It would go on forever, which means it's not a Pythagorean triple. So... Again, on the assignment, you gotta leave it, and it says in the directions, leave it as a radical. What perfect square goes into 175? 
25 seven times. And if you can't do it in your head, you just take 175 divided by 25, you'll get seven. So that would change to five squared to seven, and then you would say, yes, it is a Pythagorean triple. Areas. To find the area of a triangle, you guys remember the formula? Base times height divided by two. So for this one, this would be the base even though it's on top. This would be the height, but we don't know the height. So you gotta figure it out. So what you do is you just look at this right triangle since that's 14, this would be seven. So to find that, would you add them and square them and add them or square them and subtract them? Subtract. subtract. Nine squared minus seven squared, and then you got a square root it. And you get the square root of 32. Now these, it says we could round to the nearest 10, but you don't want to round that right away, just leave it as square root of 32. So then when you find the area, you take the base times the height divided by two, and then when you do that, then round that answer. So that would round to 39.59, 39.6, and since it's area, what do you gotta label it? Centimeter squared, yep. So for this one, the base would be here, which we don't know, and that would be the height. So we gotta use the Pythagorean theorem to figure that out. Again, we would have to subtract these because it's a hypotenuse in length. So 21 squared minus 10 squared is 341. So again, don't figure it out and round it and then find the area, just leave this as the square root of 341. So the area is gonna be the base, square root of 341, times the height divided by two. Now, one thing you gotta watch for on your calculator, if you're using one of these, if you put the square root sign and then 341, you're gonna have to put, what happens is it puts the square root, it puts a parenthesis, and then you take 341. If you don't put a parenthesis here, it's gonna keep this square root going. You gotta put a square root in this, these bigger ones to show that you're stopping the square root before you go times 10 divided by two. Remember that? So square root of 341 times 10 divided by two is 92.3 feet squared. So this assignment, I'm gonna put a couple of these up here. Um, I might be gone tomorrow, I might be back, I don't know, but we can do this in class tomorrow, either way, if I'm here or not. So, these first ones, you start at three and go through here. These you gotta leave as radicals. So you gotta do the simplifying of the square roots, okay? Um, I just wanna point out, like when you get to these, they're looking for this, they just put extra stuff on there. All you're worried about is the right triangle. That's two, that's x, this is three. On this one, there's X. Since that's 14 and that's marked, that's 14 and that's 14. Here you just worry about this right triangle. X, 29, and 20. So the same thing on the areas here now. Round to the nearest tenth, so you don't need to leave them as decimals. 
So it's going to be page uh, 538, 3 through 15. 26, 28, and 34. 